Hello, I'm Carl Leo. I'm a professor at TU Dresden, and I'm also one of the co-founders of Heliatec, which is a company which is going to manufacture flexible organic photovoltaics. We started working on organic solar cells already in the, in the 90s of the last century. And after about uh, 10 to 12 years of work, it turned out that we had a, a lot of ideas how to improve it and reach efficiency levels which make it commercially viable. So in uh, 2006, we decided to found a company which has now grown to about 60 or 65 people. And uh, we are now in the pilot production and hope to have a product in the market soon. In the last uh, few years, the efficiency has grown dramatically. It was uh, around 3 or 4 percent five or six years ago. And uh, now, within a few years, uh, we have reached 12 percent. That's the official world record held by Heliatec. And uh, the goal is to, to increase, increase it significantly further. Our estimates show that uh, about 20 percent should be possible. And say in, a, in about a decade we should be able to reach that or come at least close. The main innovation was better understanding. We started to understand what's going on in these cells. They have a rather rich chemistry in physics and the, the processes haven't been understood well. But step by step we, we got a grasp of what's going on and once you know what's going on you can develop uh, materials, you can develop better layer thicknesses, better layer arrangements, and step by step we could increase the efficiency. The original idea uh, for, for the organic solar cell was largely due to Jing Tang, a researcher at uh, Kodak. He's now a professor at the uh, University of Rochester. He worked on that in uh, Kodak labs in the late 70s, and he was the first person to show a reasonably efficient organic solar cell. So it's, it's not such a young technology, but uh, since it's a little complicated, as I said, to understand it, it took many years to, to improve it. It's an ideal technology for building integration. Imagine all glass windows would be also generating energy. And uh, long term, I'm personally convinced, although many people think this is uh, very ambitious, but I'm convinced uh, that organic photovoltaics could also uh, play a role in the power market, which means uh, energy generation either in large power plants or on roofs. The efficiency goal of 20% is what, what I believe we need for these applications. We also need very long lifetimes, uh, 20 years minimum, which again the physics will allow us, but uh, to, to do that technologically will be challenging. And finally pricing, that's a big issue. We need to really find uh, ultra cheap manufacturing methods uh, to, to get costs down. The processes are that uh, when, when you absorb the photon, the light, uh, that you first generate a bound particle, which we call the exciton. And the problem in organics is that this is very tightly bound. In, in silicon, it immediately pops apart uh, only from, from thermal excitations. But in organics, it's hard to separate. And we need a double layer structure to, to separate it. And uh, in that process, we lose some energy, which is uh, a process we want to improve to reduce uh, the loss. And then you need to transport the carriers uh, through some transport layers to, to the electrodes. So we need the active layers, this double layer structure, but we also need transport layers and we need uh, transparent and flexible electrodes. So this is a little test module realized by Heliatec. Uh, it's basically uh, a plastic sheet and uh, it's coated with the active layers, which are mostly carbon. They are very thin, about uh, one thousandth of a human hair, and therefore we need only about one gram of organic material per square meter. To compare, a silicon uh, solar module has about 200 grams of silicon per square meter. And uh, this, uh, these cells will be produced roll to roll, which means that you have a, a tool where you pull this as a sheet through and you coat it at the same time continuously with these uh, materials. This specific module is also transparent, semi-transparent. Um, so, uh, for instance, such a module could be used in building integration where you need some sun protection, but at the same time you could also generate energy. The biggest challenge is to move to mass production, to produce the organics in large amounts, not in grams, but in tons, to produce these encapsulation falls also in large amounts. So it's a matter of scaling, but uh, there is no basic issue that there's no single material in the 
in the cell which would limit its pricing. At the moment, the two biggest challenges are that we want to reduce this voltage loss. The key question is how much voltage do we have to lose to separate these excitons? And the second issue is that uh, transport in these materials, transport of exciton and charges, is not yet good enough. Uh, we know from other materials which are similar that it could be much better, but to, to realize that. And finally, uh, the, the challenge is always to then bring these, these laboratory knowledge to mass production, which is always a challenge because uh, doing things on larger area at higher speed is, is challenging.